Been to a number of matches where I've seen uh, shooters and usually new IPSC shooters wearing uh, carry conceal or everyday range use type of equipment such as this Phobos holster and double mag pouch. The difference between using um, everyday range or carry conceal equipment compared to competition equipment like what I'm wearing right now is adjustability. The holsters and the mag pouches tend to be fully adjustable in terms of uh, angling your pistol forward or backwards or canting it outwards or inwards um, and in terms of height as well. And the same can be done with the mag pouches. Uh, comp competitive mag pouches or competition mag pouches are also adjustable. Uh, in some cases for height and, and in terms of uh, angle as well. And that definitely will give you an advantage um, in shooting a match. Um, you will be able to draw your pistol out smoother, faster, quicker, um, and when it comes time to conducting a reload, you can get that mag, that mag out of your mag pouch significantly faster than compared to using uh, a carry conceal a double mag pouch as this Phobos. Let's look at holsters. As I mentioned earlier, uh, many new IPSC shooters uh, that I've seen have shown up to their first match uh, wearing a carry conceal or everyday use range holster, such as this uh, Phobos holster. This particular holster has a passive locking system. So if uh, a shooter were to use a carry conceal holster, I would suggest a passive locking system is the better route to go rather than an active. Uh, the difference between active and passive is very simple. Uh, with a passive system, there is no, there's a locking system here, but there's no buttons or any lever to move or anything like that. It simply locks into uh, the holster and you'll hear the click and that's it. And to draw the pistol, you simply pull it out and, and you're ready to, to, to use it. With an active locking system, if I had an active locking system on here, I'd have to depress a button first with a finger, hold that button down, or maybe move something out of the way, um, and then draw the pistol out. That's certainly uh, not good to have in competition. Uh, you want to be able to draw that pistol out without having to worry about pressing a button, moving some sort of other lever or something to unlock the active locking system before you can draw your handgun. Um, so, uh, if you are going to use a everyday range holster or carry conceal holster, I would suggest you, you get one with a passive locking system uh, until you've uh, made your decision on what type of competition holster you would rather have. Now, in terms of competition holsters, um, let's look at a, a holster made by Blaytech. Uh, this looks more like a traditional holster that uh, most uh, new shooters would be familiar with, but this is a competition holster. Um, it, uh, and what makes it a competition holster? Uh, a, couple of, a couple of things. First of all, uh, in terms of uh, its locking system, it is a passive locking system, um, and this is made for my CZ Shadow. It is very similar to the Phobos in that it locks into place. And you have two screws here, uh, which you can tighten to uh, increase the passive locking system or not, the friction that, that's, that exists there to keep it in, in the holster. So that's a passive locking system. Um, the other thing that, uh, that is unique to this type of a holster is you can see it has been cut out here in the front. And what that means is rather than having to pull the pistol all the way out, to clear the holster before you can bring it onto the target. If you look at it head on, you can see with the cutout, I can draw the handgun just a little faster out of that holster. So the fraction of the second that uh, uh, I'm, I'm saved 
with that extra cutout when I'm drawing could in fact make the difference between perhaps winning a, a stage or, or over an entire course of fire maybe winning the match. Um, nonetheless, um, a competition holster has various features like this whereas a normal everyday carry conceal holster would not. Um, also, this particular holster has some adjustability to it. Um, and that is uh, one of the big differences between a competition holster, uh, like what I'm, I'm wearing right now, um, or this blade tack, is that there is some adjustability. In this case, you can adjust the, uh, the angle of the holster, forward or backwards, ever so slightly with, the, with this blade tack. Um, and as well, this blade tack has a drop down uh, holster attachment. And what that means is rather than the, the holster being up high here, even with your, uh, your waist, uh, it has been dropped down a little with this attachment. The, it's also canted, so I'll put the pistol in there, you can just see it's also canted outwards a little bit. And that makes it easier for the draw. So when you're coming up and coming down on the pistol and drawing it out, uh, it allows you to uh, get a slightly better grip. Uh, there's room for your thumb to come down between the, the, your, uh, your, um, the belt and the pistol and makes it easier to draw. Um, as well, it, it does drop it down uh, on, the, on the waist, which means you don't have to bring up your hand as high to draw the pistol out. So again, another advantage of having a competition holster compared to a um, carry conceal holster, because if I take these two holsters and put them side by side, you can see how much higher. I've, I've, put the, I've put the holster, the carry conceal holster, up where the belt would be. So up here, the belt's attachment, and you can see how much higher the pistol would be. So that makes a difference. So adjustability is one of the big differences uh, in terms of a competition holster and a regular everyday uh, range use holster. So Blatec makes a very nice, uh, very nice holster. Um, here's another uh, Blade Tech holster. This is for a 1911, um, and it does have the drop-down attachment on it as well. It has the has the cutout uh, here, and this fits my six-hour 1911 Maxim shell. And it has a passive locking system uh, on there again, so you have no worries about having to step up to the line. And when you hear load and make ready, you don't have to do anything to unlock the holster or unlock the pistol from from the holster. Um, the holster is has a passive system, so it's simply a matter of drawing the pistol out uh, when you hear the beep on, on the timer. Um, what's different on this particular Blade Tech holster is the belt attachment. This is called a Tech Lock. Uh, whereas on this one it is a belt loop. Uh, the belt loop is adjustable to different widths of, of belts. Let's say if you're not using a, a standard two-piece competition belt and you're using a 511 belt, a two-inch belt rather than a one-and-a-half inch belt, uh, with this type of uh, holster or belt attachment um, and the tech lock you can adjust to those different belt widths. Um, so that's the only reason I, I show this particular um, holster to you, a second uh, blade tech, is because of the tech lock attachment uh, that is here. Um, Ghost also makes a holster very similar to the blade tech, and this is called the Stinger 2. Um, you can see uh, it is cut out here as well, um, and therefore allows you to draw the pistol out uh, just that much quicker out of this holster. It's a passive locking system as well. But what is um, really different between this particular holster and the Blade Tech is, is the rest of the holster attachment or belt attachment. This holster is significantly more adjustable. You can adjust it for many more angles. You can also adjust it canting it outwards or inwards the pistol and you have uh, also more adjustments for up and down. Um, so that is the big difference between this and the Blade Tech. Although the holsters look very, very similar, same type of material, Kydex, um, but it's the adjustability of the Ghost Stinger that makes, uh, makes the real difference between uh, this and, and a Blade Tech, as an example.
Now there, are, uh, though these are more traditional looking uh, holsters um, in competition in IPSC, uh, there are other holsters that uh, you can get, and this is a ghost holster as well, and it's called the One. Um, this is known as a race holster or speed holster. Um, doesn't look anything like a traditional holster. This is made for my uh, for a 1911. So I've got the Max Michelle in here now. And you can see that with this type of a holster, you have some support down at the muzzle and, you have, and it's supported at the trigger guard. That's how this holster works. So the barrel, the muzzle end goes in and then you lock the trigger, uh, the, uh, trigger guard into the holster here. And that's all it is. There is a locking system on here, lever. So I've got it activated now. I cannot draw the handgun. Just with a simple flick, uh, it's unlocked, and out comes the pistol. Now, not everybody is comfortable with this type of a, uh, a holster, um, but uh, many people do prefer this type of a speed holster where you have support at the muzzle end and at the trigger guard, rather than what I'm wearing uh, at this very moment. Um, I have two of these particular uh, holsters, uh, race speed holsters. This is made by USA, Universal Shooting Academy, formerly known as the SLB. Um, this is a race holster uh, as well, but uh, the difference between this and the Ghost uh, hol race holster I showed you is that there is no support for the muzzle. Uh, this is made uh, for my shadow. And as you can see, it is simply held in here by the trigger guard. Now, that isn't 100% true, because with this particular holster, it does happen to have small little claws here at the bottom, which the rail on, on the shadow slips in. So I'll bring this a little closer to the camera. You can just barely see at the bottom, there are a couple of little claws. Um, that keeps the, the pistol down against the holster as well. Uh, but many other holsters that are very similar to this do not, does not have uh, or don't have that type of a, a cloth, such as the double alpha um, speed uh, race holster. Um, and the holster I'm wearing, uh, as an example, although it's a, it is a USA holster, uh, it does not have, this is the version 2 of it, and it does not have any cloths on the bottom. Uh, there's no claws here. You can see I'm just running my hand down. It's nice and smooth. What it does have are two very powerful roller magnets. Uh, and those magnets keep the slide down and against the holster. It prevents, prevents the pistol from just freely pivoting like this uh, in, in the holster. So I place it in there, lock it in. It, it's in there. And in fact, you can see if I push down on it, the pistol falls right back down into place because the magnets are pulling the, uh, the pistol into place. Um, as I said, many shooters are not comfortable with this type of holster. Um, and, and I would recommend for a new shooter uh, to use uh, a holster similar to the Ghost Stinger 2 or, or get a Blade Tech. Um, they're traditional style holsters. You don't have to worry about a locking system, passive locking system. Uh, you'll never come up to the, uh, the, shoot, to the line and forget to unlock your, your holster, especially on an unloaded start where there's nothing to do. It's simply make ready. Uh, and if you haven't thought about unlocking your holster, and you go to draw, guess what? That gun is not coming out. Um, so for a new shooter, maybe one less thing to think about, um, you know, if you get this type of a holster. Um, the Ghost Stinger 2, um, they make it for a number of pistols. Uh, this one here is not just for my, my Shadow, but it is also um, good for my Stock 3, my Tanfoglio uh, Stock 3. Just so happens that both pistols are very similar, um, so this one holster does fit uh, both of them. Although they do make the Stinger 2, uh, model specific for the shadow as well. So there are two separate holsters, but um, I got the uh, stock three one because I knew that it would fit the shadow as well. But 
It doesn't work the other way around necessarily. The shadow of Stinger 2 does not necessarily hold the stock 3. The stock 3 is just that much bigger than a, um, a shadow. So be aware of that. One last uh, holster that I'll show you is made by Sear Speed and it's a WSM2. It is very similar to the Ghost uh, holster uh, that I showed you earlier. Um, the muzzle is supported here and then the trigger guard locks in right up here. Uh, this particular one is adjusted for my uh, Tanfoglio uh, Gold Custom Open Gun. And once again, just like the Ghost holster, the muzzle is supported. And there you can see how the pistol locks in to this particular holster. There's a locking mechanism right here, right where my index finger is. Now it's locked. It's locked in place. This particular holster does come with various shims and so forth, so you can uh, better adjust it to your, your pistol, uh, because not all trigger guards are the same. Um, on, on pistol, so therefore you might need an extra shim or the locking. Actually, the lock there's a locking, uh, one or two locking devices, uh, shims um, that you can use as well uh, to get a better lock uh, on your particular pistol that you're using in, in this holster. Um, so this is made by CR Speed, and it is a WSM uh, two. Race holsters uh, tend to be the more expensive of, of all holsters. So, um, you know, a holster like this or like my USA, uh, they're running close to $200, uh, 200 plus um, a holster, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but they're close to $200. Whereas something like the Ghost uh, Stinger 2, um, or for that matter, the Blade Tech. They're around in Canada, anyhow, they're anywhere between um, $75 and $90.